Um, I was okay in math. I struggled in math. Uh, I was in a pre-algebra class. And um, halfway through my eighth grade year, I told my pre-algebra teacher I wanted to move into algebra because I was doing so good in pre-algebra. And she said, well, Talithia, it's, you know, like, we're halfway in. You want to move in algebra in January? I'm like, yeah, 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 I can do it. I can do it. So she let me, she let me move into algebra. And uh, that first six weeks, I failed. <laughs> and I came home with an with F on my report card. And my parents said, well, do you want to go back to pre-algebra? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just going to stay here and struggle because I don't want my friends to know that I couldn't cut it in algebra. Um, I started meeting with my teacher, Mr. Dorman, and uh, by the end of the, my eighth grade year, I had moved, pulled my GPA up to a, to a B plus in algebra. And I share that to say, uh, often I get students who are very talented, mathematically talented, but come at a disadvantage. And that was my experience in eighth grade. I came in at a disadvantage. I was excited about it, but I struggled with it, and I put myself in a situation that was really uncomfortable. By the time I got to high school, I got a job as a cashier, a grocery store cashier, uh, the summer after my 10th grade year. So I worked my 11th and 12th grade year of high school at a local grocery store. This was the, the, the high fashion back in the 90s. So you missed out on this generation. It's probably coming back now when they do you know, oldies. Now we are the oldies that people wear. Um, but, you know, unbeknownst to me, when I was working as a grocery store cashier, I would do a lot of mental math because you might come up to me and you'd say, hey, Talithia, here's $20. And I would try to calculate how much change I owed you before I could punch it into the cash register. So every weekend I'm doing mental math and doing mental math and it was actually strengthening my math skills, unbeknownst to me. Um, I decided to go to Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm from Georgia. So Spelman was really close to home for me. Um, and that was also the first place that I ever met an African-American uh, female mathematician. And so the idea of becoming a mathematician was really foreign to me until I got to Spelman. Here I am pictured with the late Dr. Etta Faulkner. She was one of the first black women to get a PhD in mathematics. And it was at Spelman that I was really... Um, inspired to, to not just go into mathematics, but to see myself as a mathematician. You know, it's amazing how um, something can become so tangible to you once you see it represented in someone, right? And so for me, that experience at Spelman and, and having these professors who were so supportive and encouraging um, motivated me to go into mathematics and to pursue it. I started a PhD program at Howard University I didn't know anything about getting a PhD. Uh, in Georgia, it was great to graduate high school. Like going to college was like the cherry, you know, I mean, just woo, you're doing big things. And um, I was sitting with Dr. Faulkner one day and she said, have you thought about grad school? And I'm like, no, I'm about to put this bachelor's degree to work and <laughs> call it a day and get a job. And um, she said, well, Talithi, I think you could do well in high school, I mean, in, in, in grad school. And I was just like, well, what am I gonna do with that? That's just more school and more time. And, and then she pulled out salaries of people who have advanced degrees. And I said, how do you sign me up for this grad school thing? You, you, what is this? What do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? Um, so that's sort of what motivated me to, to go to grad school. 